Hello everyone and welcome to another video update with me, Umber Rays, on Christmas. Yes, apparently I can't take really much of a rest because Alum just wants to keep me making videos and so today we had a surprise one hour maintenance, which, um, yeah, I guess I feel bad for the guy who had to do it. Of course, the um, one of the big things that came uh, from the update, well, we now have our trial battle against Dark Side. Yes, it's Dark Side. I'm pretty sure it's Dark Side. I'm a Kingdom Hearts person. I should know this. But uh, hey, it's been uh, kind of a long day for me. And it's Christmas, but uh, here we go. So looking at it, uh, what you get from it is the Oblivion, 10k currency, uh, couple of tickets and a 5% trust moogle for a team of five killing with magic and using a limit burst all which feels pretty easy at this point on the JP side so hey good news and it's only 110 difficulty so it'll probably be way too easy done way too fast and kind of disappointing like the general Kingdom Hearts event was anyway that's my feelings on it but we have uh, a couple of interesting pieces of news first of all we have a new Christmas banner. The new Christmas banner includes a brand new Christmas unit too. Uh, not only are we seeing Santa Rosalia get a uprate, which is great for anybody who is looking to get uh, Santa Rosalia, just because you know Santa Rosalia is still one of the best healers, especially with enhancements. But um, also looking at it, um, there is a I do believe a up rainbow rate on it too. Let's just head over here real quick and take a look. Yeah, it's 5% rainbow. So hey, Merry Christmas indeed, I guess. And uh, just to take a look at these units real quick, uh, they are very festive. If you're a fan of Amelia and uh, Amelia, then uh, this is kind of just a pretty cool unit for you. I mean, they're really cute together. And check out this limit burst. I mean, that's pretty cool. That's very Christmas-themed Limit Burst. And there you go. There's your uh, Merry Christmas indeed. It kind of does suck, though, that this unit uh, comes on. Like, if you look at the summer special units that we got, there is a lot of ways to get a guaranteed one. And here, it's just a banner with 5% up, and it's shared with an older unit, albeit a great unit. But for someone like me, who already has Santa Rosalia's Super TMR, this is not an enticing banner for me. This, As a matter of fact, I'm really, really scared that I'll get my fifth one. But then we need to talk about these girls. So let's get into their kit real quick. First of all, their TMR is a Materia, 20% attack, 30% extra attack when equipped with a dagger, 30% extra attack when equipped with a gun, 20% ice and light resistance. Now, let me get this through. 80% sounds really great on paper, but first of all, this means to get 80% you have to be true dual wielding, you have to equip a gun, and you have to equip a dagger. Not exactly the greatest combination if you consider some of the best equipment out there, such as Lightning Super TMR is a sword. Uh, if you did get Fi's uh, Super TMR, then you're probably fine with this, and if you have, I don't know, there's a couple of really good daggers in the game. Ignacio's uh, Super TMR. No, not Ignacio. Sorry. Yeah, Ignis. Wrong I named character. Uh, then you can probably do a decent build on someone, but this sounds really impressive, but it's deceptive. I won't dismiss the elemental resistance on it, what is essentially a 50 attack materia. But um, to get the 80% here, you really got to do a specific unit. So, and that's another thing that we got to talk about when it comes to Amelia and Amelia. But uh, Super Trust Mastery is slightly different. Say hello to a really nice gun. 175 attack with 50% extra attack when he equipped with a gun. While this sounds really nice, uh, basically an extra 50% attack for equipping a gun. I kind of wish that instead it was true dual wield. Uh, this just doesn't really excite me a whole bunch, other than it being a 175 attack gun with a 50% attack passive. Really great gun. I'm just not as wiggly about it because we've seen quite a few of these weapons by this point, and I'm a little burnt out on going on banners. So again, great super TMR, but 
pretty much all Super TMRs are. So I don't really know what else to say about this. Now, getting into her kit, or hers kit, I guess. Uh, looking at passives, their base attack is 204, which is pretty low considering some of the dual wheel units we've seen recently. With passives, she can get up to 914, and this is something that a lot of people are super excited about. Uh, looking at her kit, she has a massive amount of passives. She has extra human killer, which we'll get to. Uh, she decreases encounter rate, she decreases her chance to be countered, she can wield two daggers or guns, so not exactly the most flexible dual wield, which is something I'm not particularly pa excited about, but in her kit, I mean, she has double casting, uh, you know, of a lot of her abilities. Uh, well, she has two types of double casting. She has just a ton of attack passives, so much so that with her own TMR and basically a gun with the 40% attack from item world, she can hit the attack cap super good. But she does have a lower attack. I mean, essentially, I guess you could build her for other stats too, once you've hit it, or elemental resistance. There might be something really good here. And she has a lot of extra damage versus humans, which is a imp important killer to have. She also has the increased chaining damage modifier on her. She has extra modifiers for attacking 7-star, more some true dual wield in her kit and whatnot, some limit burst per turn. Uh, I guess we haven't talked about her limit burst yet, so really quickly, let's talk about her limit burst. Uh, it's an AoE 16 hit, 2200% physical attack that debuffs attack and defense for 70% for 5 turns. That's 70%. It costs 30 limit burst crystals. It's AoE attack. I mean, it's pretty nice. A little bit low of a modifier on it. But yeah, I mean, the debuff is pretty nice, especially on attack. I'm just kind of like Sora's, 5% less, but covers everything. It's a tough field right now to be a damage dealer. In her kit, she has attacks that can heal the party, which is kind of neat. A little bit of support on a physical damage dealer. And she has debuffs of 65% for five turns uh, to a single target. So she can be a pretty strong little debuffer too, which is kind of nice for anyone who is needing a debuffer. Uh, she has a chance to stomp enemies, good for arena, I guess. Uh, she can add either ice or light to her attacks. She has AoE 16 hit abilities that debuff uh, either 80% for ice or 70% for light. Neither of these are super exciting for long-term players because uh, 5, for instance, can debuff for 120%. 80 just isn't that great, even if it is AoE chaining. Uh, there are better options out there for elements, I think. Uh, she has nine hits, but the weird thing is talking about her big chaining abilities, both of which are Stardust Ray or Disorder Chainings for global people, I think is the term that they like to use. I think. Um, uh, Disorder Chaining and like Stardust Chaining, 10 hits is a pretty small chaining family on the JP side. So it might be better on global, but not so great here. Oh, I go. Oh, she does have single target. Sorry, I forgot to mention this. She does have single target one hit abilities that debuff 120% for ice resistance or light and 100% for light resistance. But neither of these are either very, either either or uh, super exciting because you have to use that ability. She doesn't have triple cast, so she's kind of losing out a little bit by doing that. I mean, she's probably a really, still, she's undoubtedly a really strong chainer. Ding indeed. But, um, I don't know. Uh, looking at the, re uh, the, let's get to the rest of her kit really quickly. I should mention that those debuffs are only for light and ice, or the big ones are only in her seven star kit. Then she has her one cooldown ability, which is a single target 10 hit, 2200%. Uh, that gives a 650% modifier for another of her ability. Uh, on a three turn cooldown, available turn three. Eh, it's, it's okay. Uh, and her last one, which is a random ability that can do a lot of different things, but isn't su probably super reliable because it's random, so you're never really going to use it in a boss fight because a lot of it is status effects is not exciting. So yes, uh, here is my general review of these girls. First of all, uh, they do have really nice 
uh, coverage, or sorry, not coverage, I should say compatibility with Santa Rosalia. So the banner itself is pretty good at a 5% rainbow too. It's not exactly the worst thing if you wanted to try and get one of these girl, or well, I mean Santa Rosalia or the girls anyway. But um, natural dual wield is nice, if not a little limited. She has a lot of passives, but too low of a base attack to be super exciting. She'll probably lose out and just not having triple cast probably hurts her a fair bit and her limit burst isn't super exciting. So these are cool unit. This is definitely a cool unit that can fit into a ice geared party, probably fit well chaining with Phi or and then healing and off turns if you just wanted big swing turns or something like that. But my general theme thing is that this is doesn't feel super exciting, but I may be underestimating the human killer here. So yeah, 100% human killer does go a long way to boosting against the training dummy. So remember that if you see her in specific trials, but I'm not super convinced about this trial and I'm kind of tired from the end of the year, so I'm just not going for it. And speaking of giant wastes of lapis, here you are. The Christmas Bundle. And I would call this a Grinch Bundle because this is terrible value, I feel like. Uh, looking at it, it's not even King Pots. It's just medium level pots, to my understanding. Or it might be King Pots, but... Um, Stat pots are not that valuable anymore. Uh, they have been given out a fair amount over the course of the year. You can get a fair number of them. And if you just are a little choosy about which characters you spend them on, this is not a big deal. The 10 max level characters are not a big deal. And you're essentially trading 5k Lapis for a few bonuses as well as just a 11 pull. But Lapis is far more valuable now because of step ups. Step ups have been very, very good this year. Uh, on some accounts and not so good on other accounts. But yeah, uh, this just doesn't feel good. I don't like anything about this. And I think that you should stay away from this really, really far away. Chances are there will be a better New Year's bundle anyway. So yeah, not a fan. Stay stay far away. There it is. Just, just don't do it. Don't do it. Now, interestingly enough, here is a brand new trial. The new trial is based on FFBE characters, which um, if you look here, here are the units that will get bonus up to their stats. So uh, you'll notice that uh, Chocobo Fina is on there, but not Hayu. So fuck you, Hayu. That's the only thing I got to say. And Axtar is not on there either, probably because he would make the trial just generally too easy, I guess. But um uh, no idea about how difficult this trial is, haven't tried it yet, but another series boss trial, which uh, should be if we just go up here, and here, and here, where is it? Or is it being added in the future? Oh, maybe it's being added just a little bit later. Interesting. I may have not seen that quite close enough. Huh, I don't see a date on it. Okay, I'm assuming that it will be added with the next maintenance. Either that or it's just not showing up. Which is probably the case, because here is the next part of the story, which will be added. Speaking of which, we are already finding out when our next maintenance is. It is on the 27th of December, which is literally two days away. Holy crap. Holy, holy, holy crap. That's right around the corner. Uh, basically, one or one to five, so four hour long maintenance. So it'll be a fairly lengthy maintenance. It'll probably also have some data for after New Year's, just because... Uh, New Year's is kind of big in Japan. It's kind of a ho big holiday here. So, yeah. Um, we will probably just see all of the maintenance come in this one little update. And speaking of which, there was a little bit of information kicked around on the Discord. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on this, but by the sounds of it, it looks like our next Mog King event will be a Orders event again. 
So looking right now like it won't be a new CG character, there's also no live stream scheduled at this point in the month, so I doubt they're going to drop a brand new CG character on us without being able to hype it up. So I'm assuming that it'll be a low-key banner for the 1st of January, and other than that, there isn't really much to talk about. I guess we'll find out in a couple of days when the data is out again. But uh, hey, they're keeping me busy, so thumbs up to that. Lots of stuff to do. So yes, uh, looking at the update, here's my general thoughts. Uh, this stayed the hell away from it. This is a very bad deal at 5k Lapis. Uh, looking at the Santa banner, if you don't have Santa Rosalia Super TMR and you're kind of, and you're definitely okay with getting that amazing shield, then this is a pretty damn good banner. And if you're looking for a chainer, I think these are really good, especially for a new account. But for long-term accounts, it's probably a pretty damn safe pass. Looking into the future, we will see a maintenance on the 27th, which is right around the corner. Again, more maintenance. And then we'll probably find out what our next Mog King is, as well as what the new bundles are for New Year's. So you can probably pretty comfortably wait on spending any Lapis anyway. But that is all for me, you guys. I have to go make some Christmas dinner Hope you're all doing well, and I will see you in the next video, whenever that is. See you then.